everybody, and welcome back to Joygasm, video game and movie podcast. I'm Russ, and who knew that innocent-looking animals could pack a punch in episode 326 today, October 24th, 2023. We're going to be going right into our topic of the day, which is... Party Animals Gameplay Impressions. This has been a game that I have been looking forward to sharing and chit-chatting with all of you about for quite some time. This game was originally showed, I want to say like two or three years ago at an E3, uh, just as, as part of Xbox's lineup of future titles. And it caught my eye immediately because of how much of a contrast there was between the cutesy graphics but then also like just, just this absolute knockdown drag out mayhem ro royal rumble basically of a fight that goes on and then it kind of went away for a while and now it has returned and is now available on xbox game pass and it is a riot i am i'm just gonna tell you that straight out of the gate um it <laughs> I was not prepared. I had an inkling. I had an inkling. But when it came to the game itself, I was thinking, okay, just based off the game trailer alone, I think this is going to be my kind of game. Uh, I'm hoping it will be, and I'm so glad that it turned out to be that and so much more. This game is based on the, the kind of the party game mechanic, which honestly I've been wanting for quite some time. I really haven't seen a game like this on Xbox, or really PlayStation for that matter. I know that the Nintendo Switch has their kind of party Royal Rumble game where they have like tons of Nintendo characters and that sort of thing. And the, yeah, the, the name of the game eludes me at the moment. But in terms of this game of party animals, this is such a welcome addition to the Xbox stable just because I can't think of another game that they have that is like this. And the idea is, is that you have a number of players that, you know, it could be just, you know, one like blue team versus red team, or you can have, I want to say it's like up to four, maybe five uh, different types of, of duos, you know, teams of consisting of duos that, um, you know, they, they're color coded like blue, red, green, yellow, orange I think um, but the idea is is that it's kind of like this uh, last team standing wins thing but it is an absolute blast one of the big successes of this game and really I, I feel like this is at the crux of the secret sauce of why this game is so fun to play is it has this intentional control mechanic where <laughs> It just makes me laugh when I, as I'm describing this, but each of these characters are super cute, plush toy looking animals, but they're all rather top heavy. It's almost like, like most of the mass of the weight is in the head of these animals. And so when you're moving them around with a the controller, they have this kind of that they lead with their head in such a way where it's like they're almost going to topple over, but th but they're not. And then on top of that, the controls themselves. So the movement is, I would say, more or less, it's not like super tight, but it's the tightest of all the rest of the controls in terms of response time. The actual combat mechanics, though, are intentionally delayed by like, I would say, two seconds-ish, somewhere around there. So if you try and throw a punch, then... <laughs> The, the the character doesn't actually throw the punch right as you press the button. There's like this little bit of delay. And I think it kind of depends on what type of fighting move you do. So if you decide you want to headbutt someone versus you want to punch him versus you want to say do a drop kick, or maybe you have a certain type of weapon, you know, that they have different types of weapons that drop in, some of which have a little bit quicker of a response time than others. And that's what makes so much of this mayhem just a laugh out loud good time because it's just everybody is running amok and nobody <laughs> has full control over what they want to do at a specific amount of time. So it's almost like you have to mentally unlearn 
how your your gaming muscle memory works in order to be proficient at this game. And let me tell you, my eight year old daughter has spent so many hours playing this game and she is really, really good. I, I sit back and I'm flabbergasted as to how good she is at this game. And she has really gotten down that, that whole delay combat mechanic tactic. I'm, I'm very uh, proud Papa right here. I, I think that's the best way to, to put it. Anyway, the, the gameplay mechanics itself is just super funny because now you have somewhere in the vicinity of, I wanna say probably 10 to 12 of these animals running around. And with everybody having these delayed situations, sometimes your own teammate may sock you in the face. Folks, the animations on this are hysterical. It's the funniest thing where like you're you, you're trying to, to control your character and do something. And then out of nowhere, you have this other cutesy looking like walrus come out of nowhere and like just totally sock you in the jaw. And it's the funniest thing because the, the sound effects are hilarious. The game even does like a temporary bullet time slow-mo. Like if someone really hits some, like will hit you like really well, or maybe like you hit someone else really well, but most of the time it's you. Like if someone really clocks you good, <laughs> the game goes and you just, you get to enjoy how your character just looks unconscious there for a little while. Uh, and not only that, but like if, say for instance, they temporarily stun you, so you know, you're on your back or you're on your belly or whatever, they even have animations where like your eyes are closed shut, like you're, like you're seeing birdies and stars. You don't actually see that, but just, you know, trying to describe this for you. And at the same time, like their mouths might be arched open. Like the, the alligator, for instance, is the funniest when he's unconscious because his mouth is just ajar and his tongue is sticking out and it, it's it's the funniest thing. And then he has to kind of shake it off and get back up and, and uh, get back into the fray. And I, and I think that actually makes me want to, to pivot into talking about the animals themselves. The animals are a wonderful variety. There are actually several of these animals in Party Animals. And uh, you can unlock more as you go along. They have kind of this... Uh, progression XP system in place. And so like, um, as you accumulate like little uh, dog bones, basically, you can use those to unlock certain skins or um, they also have like their own like in-game currency thing that you can slowly accumulate as you do basically their version of a grind. But the game is so fun and the matches are over pretty quick. You can accumulate that over time as well. So when you look at um, the, the, the menu itself, like you go into the game menu and you're looking at, at uh, the overall presentation, the menu system is extremely easy to navigate through. And that includes looking at the various animals or the character roster. So when you look in there, I mean, you've got corgis, you've got different types of cats. You even have a Garfield cat that they call Garfat in there, which is really, really funny into itself. They have alligators, walruses, they have uh, like an owl character. They have uh, a bull, uh, different types of sharks, the hammerhead shark, that sort of thing. I think they have like kind of like a, yeah, they have like a, a, I don't know if it's a great white, but they also have a hammerhead and they, they got something else. So many different types of cats. And I can't even, I can't even recall that there are so many of these creatures, bear, uh, they even have so, and and this is this is worth mentioning as well. They so that the studio is called Recreate. I I've never heard of them until now. Um, this is uh, to my understanding probably like their first really big release as a studio. But what's impressive is they have been able to um, get licenses for different things. Like for instance, one of the dog characters has a uh, uh, an outfit from Half Life which is super fun. I mean, it's like, it's just like, once again, this like cartoony looking plush uh, dog. I, I can't remember if it was a Corgi or if it was a different kind of dog, but then they're wearing the same half, that you're basically the, the recognizable Half-Life suit. Also, some of the playable characters that you can get are Ori from Ori in the Blind Forest and Ori Will of the Wisps, as well as Ori's friend. And I can't remember the friend's name off the, off the top of my head, but they are available if you want to get them in the store. 
They have their own little set list. I mean, and they look legit. Like they, they look fantastic. So my hope is, is that they'll be able to continue going down this road of being able to feature different types of IPs, whether it's just a skin or maybe they can bring in other characters. Kind of, sort of like how Nintendo has their Rumble, you know, their party Royal Rumble type of game, which again, I still can't remember the name of the game. It's driving me nuts. But they have a lot of featured guest characters as well as, as you know, guest characters within the Nintendo stable itself. So we'll have to see how this goes. This is a little different because it's all predominantly, well, it's not predominantly, it is. It's, it's all animals. Uh, but it's so fun to be able to choose different types of, of fur patterns or colors on your on your beast of choice. They have different types of outfits they can wear. They, I mean, like the duck. Oh, that, that's yeah, another animal is uh, they have both a goose and a duck. The goose has one particular skin that is uh, Mother Goose. You have the duck, which for some reason, I keep thinking of Daffy Duck. It do, it, it's not Daffy Duck at all, but... <laughs> For some reason, the way that the duck fights kind of sort of makes me think of Daffy Duck. Anyway, Daffy, or now I'm going to start calling it Daffy Duck. The duck has different types of Star Wars outfits, so it has kind of an inspired uh, Stormtrooper outfit, which, by the way, has different colors that you can choose from. So, again, the whole idea around these different types of options is that it's just fun. It's fun. You just, you, you dress up and you look ridiculous or you look, you know, you could look cool if you want. And then you go and you run amok and the game types themselves are also a bit varied too. So like, for instance, like there's one particular level that is an iceberg, right? Like you're all fighting on, on top of this iceberg. Well, the iceberg, of course, is slippery. So once again, think about like how the controls are and then think about the fact that you're also slipping and sliding on all this ice and as time goes on within the match, um, parts of the iceberg will begin to break off. So the, the area of the, the match itself becomes smaller and smaller, more condensed. And oh, by the way, if you fall into the icy water, if you don't swim and get back up out of the water, then you freeze and then you're, you're out of that particular round. Each match, I think it depends on, I think the game type that you're playing, like which map you're on. But typically it's like, you know, whichever team scores three wins in a row, more or less is like, you know, becomes the victor, which is interesting because once again, if you have say five different teams that are playing, you know, consisting of two people on each team, that can last a while because you have, you know, maybe red team wins one and then blue team wins one and maybe yellow team wins, you know, so it, unless you have a particular team that consists of very experienced players, you may be playing that for you know a little while longer, which again, not a problem. I have not gotten bored at all when playing this game. There are other game uh, types of modes within the maps themselves. There's a great one where there are these two trains that are racing, and so uh, part of the strategy is you have to grab. So that, that's actually another control feature within animal or, uh, party animals. As I say, Animal House, uh, is, you know, you, you get to grab onto pieces of coal and then run them as fast as you can frantically over to the train itself and throw it into the fire because you want your train to, like, get ahead of the other train. You can also jump onto the opponent's train and just cause all kinds of chaos, you know, throwing other people off the train, smacking them. They even have an e-brake, like, you know, a brake on uh, on the train itself to slow it down. So if you want to go over there and mess with the other team, you can pull that brake and they're trying to punch you and get you off their train and whatnot. There's another one where there's uh, this map where, like, in the middle is this... Uh, kind of rushing river and then there are these these two sides uh, that the land exists on and I can't remember the the correct name but it's like those old medieval style uh, slingshot things you know the big ones that you'd like won't like load some sort of huge ball into and launch over and try and take out a like a castle for example it's kind of like that only you have these explosives that then you and your team have to drag you have to grab onto it drag over and load this thing up and then launch it onto the other team once again you can even load like some of your crew into that that uh slingshot thing and uh or catapult there, there it is see my brain works sometimes you can launch your buddies in the catapult and then they can cause chaos on the other side as well so so 
little similarities like that, but they have these these map um, options that are really, really fun. They have another one where like, it's the battle of the arcade. So you're in some kind of like uh, classic arcade area with two arcade machines. And the idea is, is that you have to um, essentially hold on to the arcade joystick and then all of a sudden you'll be transported into like a 2D game where you're collecting diamonds and coins and that sort of thing. <laughs> and whichever team gets the, the, I guess, whatever kind of capped score um, that you have to reach first will win. So it's what's so funny about this is that it's a playoff of having people wanting to play uh, games in the arcade back in the day where like they put like a quarter or a token and line them up on the arcades that they wanted to be their turn. That's not what happens in this game. In this game, you're desperately trying to hold on so you can play a game and everybody's trying to beat you and get you off the, the arcade so then they can play and try and get more points for their team. Sheer absurdity in the best way possible. Super, super funny. I can't tell you how many times I've laughed over all this. And I mean, I could go on and on. I mean, they have so many different maps. They have got one with a submarine that like uh, will have certain launching periods of missiles. So you see these 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 missile bays open up and a uh, missile will launch and the blast of, of the missile will blow everybody possibly into the water. And you've got to frantically swim back onto the submarine. At one point, the submarine starts to sink. And so everyone's like desperately climbing to the top of the submarine and everyone's pulling each other off and smacking each other. And it's you know, kind of the King of the Hill-esque, if you will. Uh, <laughs> there's another one where you're in some kind of scientific laboratory and every once in a while, this weird vortex appears and there's like kind of, you're on this, this huge kind of industrial, I don't know what device or something, but it has like this, this circular catwalk but it's it's empty in the center so any anytime this thing gets activated it starts to suck you and all the different types of props and barrels and you know whatever toward the center before it shuts off and then everybody falls so that's part of the strategy too is you've got to hold on to something <laughs> that's nailed down otherwise you could drop and then you know you'll you'll be out of that round for instance uh which brings me to another point of what's so fun about this game so when you get knocked out for any given round, what's really fun about this too is you actually are, are not necessarily a passive spectator watching the rest of the round play out. You do do that, of course, but the game also has this little meter at the bottom of the screen that basically once it, it's able to charge up to a certain extent, it gives players who are watching the the rest of the round play out the option to be able to throw like a fish at like a, a particular player that's still in the game or there's like a banana peel let me tell you it's hilarious to like throw a banana peel and watch some character who doesn't even know you're throwing the banana peel into the ring have them slip and fall and whatnot or like you see like one guy who's a, who lifts up the last other opponent and you think that they're about to win, you throw a fish at him and knocks them down, makes causes them to drop whoever it is they're about to throw out of the ring. And finally, there's also a bomb. There's a ticking time bomb that you can toss into the ring as well. It has this like area of, of effect explosion that can like cause different players to uh, get jettisoned out of the ring and, and also uh, be out for that particular round. Brilliant. The whole thing is so brilliant. It's, it, the whole thing is designed around this idea of the, the notion of the party game and how they, they want to elicit as many chuckles and laughs and, and hoops and hollers as possible. Another aspect of this game that's also super fun is the group photo at the end. So whenever the, the match is complete and there's a team that wins, they have this moment where it's it's kind of like when you're in one of those fun uh, photo booths, right? Where like there's there's like a uh, kind of a countdown timer before it actually takes the shot, and so you got to kind of get ready, get into a pose, that sort of thing. <laughs> well, everybody who was in that match can basically jockey for a position to try and get their nice, big, glamorous close up. But the problem is everybody else wants to get in there too. And so like someone will be like moving on up. And again, you gotta remember these characters move so 
Oh my gosh! Like it's it's the funniest thing to watch them just kind of because they're 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 top heavy and their shoulders all jiggle and stuff. <laughs> and you think you've got like the perfect pose position, then someone like flies in off frame and like drop kicks you in the head. And sometimes the camera clicks right as that happens. <laughs> so you'll see like I don't know like a moose like come in with like some big like ninja kick. And you see the the look on your character's face frozen in time. We're just like, and again, it's just brilliant. The whole thing to me, as far as I'm concerned, it's like this constant, like combination of dopamine hits and serotonin hits where you're just, you, you feel so positive. You're just happy. It, it's, it's the funniest thing. Like when, as you're playing this game. The graphics also are worth noting in the sense that while there is a decidedly cartoonish type of art direction, the actual depth of the colors used are really nice. It doesn't matter if it's the, the actual animals themselves or if it's the level that you're playing on. The whole game is very beautiful, very nicely done. The music also is super fun. It fits perfectly with what's going on where like you... <laughs> There is this weird kind of face value innocence because all the animals look so fluffy and cute and devoid of actual expressions and they kind of remind you of plush toys. But then you get into a match and you realize, man, these animals are brutal. Like they, <laughs> they, they've really got these moves that you kind of feel. You're like, oh, that looked like that hurt kind of thing. The music reflects that perfectly. It's this like mischievous, uh, fun, kind of sort of whimsical but just i don't know I, i'm a big fan of that i need to find out who they got to actually uh score the the soundtrack of this game because whoever that composer is just you nailed it like it, it's it's perfect it's really really perfect so anyway the game itself high replayability really really fun the ironic thing for me is that I can't get any of my friends to try it out. For some reason, I don't know if, if everybody's just super busy right now or what the deal is, but I implore each and every one of you, if you have an Xbox and, and you have Xbox Game Pass, you've got to try this game out. It is an absolute riot. It is so fun. Totally one. I mean, I can tell you right now, it's like one of my favorite games of 2023. It, it, it is the premise of it is so welcome to the, the current lineup of games that are available. I can't recommend this game enough. I think it's super fun. My hope is, is that they will continue to expand and, and release more animals. For instance, we, when I say we, I mean my daughter and I, uh, like we've noticed there's like a pigeon character that every once in a while we'll see, but not very often. And we're not sure where that particular character exists because, uh, you know, you go through the roster of characters and, and it, if you go through the store, you can kind of see like what's available. Um, also, like as you gain more experience and you level up, that sort of thing, they have this XP timeline that showcases different types of prizes you can get as you go along and you gain more XP and that sort of thing. We know we've never seen this pigeon character at all. So I don't know if that was a developer perhaps that was testing out one of the animals and we just happened to see them or if there was some other way you can get the pigeon but the pigeon is also fantastic just visually speaking you've got these big old eyes just looking around like, huh? Huh? and then the idea of it like going around and then like punching and doing all the other stuff it, it's just oh my gosh it is stupid funny super super good but as I was saying I, I really do hope that we are able to see more animals get added to the roster. Like, I, I mean, we are, I mean, there's even like a unicorn that's in the roster. Like uh, the, these different types of animals are starting to pop into my mind, but there are, I would say at least 20 animals that are available. And so that makes for a, a really good time. But that's the greatest thing about the animal kingdom is if they want to, they can continue to add to that. And I'd be down. I'd be for it. I would pay for it. I think that's the greatest thing is that because this is Xbox Game Pass, this is a game I just download based off a subscription fee. And then 
if they have different types of ways of grinding in order to get certain things, or if I wanted to, say, make a microtransaction because there's a particular new character I'd love to get or whatever, I'm down. This is the type of game that like I absolutely want to support because you don't see games like this come around every once in a while. So kudos to Recreate. I think that they've got this brilliant hit on their hands. Super, super fun. And I say, and try to convince your friends to play it too. It is the funniest thing. I, I know I've already said this, but I, it's, well, it's, it's like, it's the type of game where you're trying to get the other people to check it out because you're so excited due to the brilliance of the game, but other folks need to experience it for themselves. And then I'm, I am confident uh, they will have a good time with it too. That wraps up this episode of Joygasm. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you enjoyed this episode, I invite you to check out patreon.com slash joygasm where you can enjoy exclusive perks as well as all kinds of other goodies that we have. Uh, well, and you can help financially support the show. Also, make sure you click on that subscribe button as well as that notification bell. That way you will not miss a single solitary episode of Joygasm. It drops most of the time, once a week, each week. And we're on social media, so if you have a particular one of choice, you can check us out at Joygasm TV. Just do a search for J-O-Y-G-A-S-M TV to check us out there. Last but not least, you can follow us along on Twitch. Just look for at Joygasm TV, and uh, you'll probably be able to see us stream our gaming adventures live, such as Party Animals, uh, amidst a myriad of other titles. And of course, we'd love to have you. I will look forward to seeing all of you again next week. Take care.